Hey everyone, it's Wednesday the 4th of January and it's now 9.15 in the evening. I hope you all had a good holiday and uh, I'd like to wish you all a, a very happy new year. So what have I got for you for the very first video of 2023? Well as you can see I've got a die cast haul here and I thought whilst I went through all of this and showed you what I've acquired um, I could talk a bit about uh, how I go about the um, die cast collecting hobby and what I'm uh, currently up to here in the bedroom because you may have noticed got a change of scenery as well I'm doing things a bit differently this is the uh, this is actually where my Windows 95 PC and whatnot was sitting so I thought I'd actually make use of the space. I thought I might make a nice um, filming table. So, here I've got a mix of stuff that I actually bought during the holidays from the usual, my, um, my die-cast car supplier, that's what I'm going to call them. And um, there's a few items here that are gifts, or were gifts for Christmas. Uh, actually, there's also a two packs. I'm missing some Hot Wheels. I'll have to go and get those in a moment. Yeah, I bought those brand new. One from QD Stores. And there's three here that I actually got from Lidl's. I know where the other five are. Let me just run and get them. Right, I'm back. They are just off camera to the left here. Haven't <laughs> quite got enough room. Um... Anywho, I'm going to start with the ones uh, that I got as gifts. So, the first lot are these five here, which are all Hot Wheels and all Hot Wheels Fantasy. So I've got the fire truck, which is my least favourite out of these. Um, I can't remember what they called this one now, but it is a hauler. You can actually put uh, cars on the back of it. I like that feature. Uh, this one is the Surf and Turf. Big blower out of the front and a little surfboard on the roof. And you've got the dinky little garbage truck. And the last one in that set. I'm sure I've got another one of these in a different colour. Not this funky thing. Now, most collectors don't like the fantasy stuff. They absolutely hate it. I'm a bit hit and miss on it. It really just depends. Some I some vehicles I like and others I just think are total garbage and it end up in a, in a pot I've got for the car boot. Because <laughs> you really can't do a lot with them. I think that's why, one of the reasons collectors hate them. Uh, yeah, so that's the first lot. And they were actually given to me by a very close friend of mine. And he also got me a set from Lidl's. Um, from Plative, which are over here. So, that's the first one. Again, they're fantasy type cars, not based on anything real. But I actually don't mind the look of these. And to be honest, for a cheaper brand, they are not that bad, quality wise. I mean, they're not going to match up with, like, the Matchbox or the Hot Wheels here, or the Corgis, but, yeah, they're not bad for what they are. So that's the first one, which I quite like. That one, I'm not so keen on, but I do like the gold wheels. Ooh. This one reminds me of, like, you know, a posh 1930s coupe or something. That's what that reminds me of. I'm guessing that's what that might be um, based on. This one, however, is my favourite. I actually like this. It reminds me a little bit of the um, Simpsons car. Just sort of like a cartoony style sedan. That's what that reminds me of. And then we've got this one. And again, that was another set that was given to me by uh, a close friend of mine. I actually quite like them. Right, now we're going to look at the uh, 
a three pack of Hot Wheels that I got from Lidl's and naturally Hot Wheels had to throw a fantasy car in there so there's the fantasy car that came with this one this five, uh, three car set <laughs> um, they had a few there different um, three car sets but I actually like this one the best so we've got the purple Corvette and purple is one of my favourite colours um, and I think I'm not sure I am open to be corrected, but I think that is a Pontiac. And I really like that one as well. I like the blue with like these matte or flat black stripes on them. I've actually noticed this one's damaged. It's got some damage on that one. I don't think it's going to show up in this light, but yeah, there is some damage on that stripe. Ooh, factory defect there. Right, and the other set I bought brand new is the Fast and Furious set. With vehicles from um, five different movies. So we've got the Nissan, I can't remember. <laughs> Am I going to be able to see that? No, not on that basis, it's too shiny. But yeah, that was one of them. Um, got the GT40. And a very nice dark blue. Uh, an Impala. A Lancer. Evo 9, from the looks of it. This has got Mitsubishi Evo on the bottom, but I think, I think that is the Evo 9. It's either the Evo 9 or an Evo 8. I can't remember. And the Gran Torino. Which is actually in a very nice me uh, metallic green. Can't tell you what movies they are from because I can't remember. I haven't got the pack anymore. <laughs> but uh, that actually cost me ten ninety nine for those. That was in um, QDs, which stand and QD stands for quality discounts. Yeah, I'm not sure where the discount was. <laughs> I have bought a five pack of Fast and Furious cars in the past but I don't think I paid quite that much for them anywho pretty much actually no there's one more item that I actually got for Christmas and that was from uh, well I think it was actually from my sister it's uh, this limited edition Corgi Club number 261 Aston Martin DB5, James Bond's Aston Martin DB5. And it's going to be one of the very few cars that's going to live in the box. And yes, it does actually function. So there it is. A very nice sort of display, cardboard display stand. But, uh, it does function. I'm not going to do the ejector seat because it is an absolute bugger. To get the figures back in there. There is two figures. One in the ejector seat and Bond himself. And uh, for some reason they didn't glue Bond in. So he wobbles around as well. And sometimes he gets stuck under the injector seat. So you can't actually close the roof yet. It's a bit fiddly. So if I press on the exhaust. We do get the uh, bulletproof shield pop up. And if I press on the front button there. That pops out your guns on the front. And that one is your ejector button, which I don't want to hit. Because like I said, it needs a bit of a bugger to get back together. And uh, it's quite powerful, and you'll find your passenger will just go flying across the room. But yeah, I really do like that. And it also came with... I'm just going to have to get up off my knees. A tin here for your um, certificate of authentication, authenticity. Um, I've actually got <laughs> some parts in here for a model kit and a Vanguard's certificate there. But there's the um, certificate for the model itself. And it also came with a 
reprint of this catalogue and details on the back for joining the um, Corgi Club which um, I am toying with the idea of actually joining it's quite nice in here it's just got all the different models they had back in what was it 1966 I get the light from uh, I'll prevent the light from shining on it yeah three pence three pence that's what it cost for this little catalog it's got all sorts in it and uh, one thing I want to do this year is actually add some more of these older corgis to my collection I mean I did add this one just before Christmas which is actually in that catalogue not in this colour scheme but it is in that little catalogue right so that actually does now leave everything that I bought from um, my diecast supplier around the corner He's got a load more um, stuff up at the minute. He's got a load of um, Atlas Dinky models. But, uh, I haven't got any spare cash until <laughs> next week. Boo! Never mind. I think he said he's got like 60 plus of them that he wants to sell. So, I've got some Matchbox here. Now, I know I've got that one, that one, that one. Actually, I've actually I've got all of these already. However, this Mark 1 Transit is in the best condition out of every one I have got. Including the one I actually restored, which is up on the shelf just above us. So, I want to see if I can find a reproduction pallet to go on the back of that and make that one a complete one again. Um, I need to check these ones against the others I've got. In fact, one of them is going to be quite easy because uh, I can see it from here. Uh, if I can get to it without uh, my big head getting in the way of the camera. Uh, yeah, see, I've already got that one. And I think this one is actually in better condition than that one. To be honest, there isn't a lot between them, so it doesn't matter, but yeah, I've already know I've got this one in just as good condition, so those two are definitely um, ones to sell. I do want to go through... Actually, that one's a definite one to sell as well, because I already know I've got one in great condition. This one, I want to check it with the other one I've got, because I'm not sure if the other one's got a, a decent sticker on the front of it. Um, and I think my other one of these is in just the same condition as that one. And I'm pretty certain this one is in better condition than my other one. That one's got a couple of little uh, piggies with it. Well, I assume the piggies went with this. They were just rolling around in the bottom of the box. But I have already got that truck somewhere. So that's another one I'm going to have to um, check. So yeah, those are definite selling ones. I also got this, the Ford Capri from Matchbox. He had three of these and I think next week I'm going to ask him if he's still got the other two because I would like another one. Simply because I want to hang one up on the shelves in here so I've got one on display in the pack and then I want to open the other one so I've got a loose one. I didn't think of that when I got this but uh, yeah he actually only charged me three quid for that, which I didn't think was um, too bad. I know I could have got it cheaper if I bought it brand new, but to be honest, by the time I'd put fuel in the moped, travelled all the way to Norwich and probably gone around several different stores trying to find the Capri, it would have actually probably been cheaper just to buy it from him for the extra pounds. So, you know, I don't mind paying an extra bit you know for um, some models because I can't get Matchbox around here at all here in North Walsham there's not one store that actually stocks it I don't know why I can get Hot Wheels I can get Hot Wheels very easily 
Matchbox? No. Nope. I'd have to go up to Norwich. So yeah, I don't mind paying. I would have actually been quite happy to pay um, probably three or four quid extra for that. Um, you know, because I know it would have cost him petrol to actually go up to the sea to um, find them himself. Himself, rather. <laughs> right, let's move these out of the way. Next row is a row of corgi. Which uh, I think there's only, f yeah, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, there's six here that I've already got. And I think these ones are already up on the shelf. Uh, so I could probably compare those. I've got some corgis missing because I've rolled off the shelf. Um, Oh yeah, I forgot I got that one from him the other week, which I thought I already had. And then I found my one up on the shelf, and look, they are actually different. One's red and blue, one's green and red, or red and green. So they are actually different. Uh, I know what I'm looking for, I just, ah, I found them. It's the two tow trucks. I think I'm looking at the wrong end for the cement truck. Got a few of these up here actually. So there's my blue one. Well actually I thought this was the same but it isn't. This one's actually different. It's actually a different shade of blue. Look at that. You see that on camera? This one's more of a darker metallic blue. And they've got different... Ah! I know what the difference is. I don't know why they're different. This one's Corgi Juniors. And these two red ones, or at least these two red ones, I'm going colour blind now. This blue one, I think, is a Whiz Wheels. No, that just says Corgi Juniors as well. I swear one of these was Corgi Junior's Whiz Wheels. Yeah, these two are the same. No. <laughs> really? Look at this. Look at that, right? No sticker on that side. Sticker on that side. They're both identical. They've both lost the same sticker. And actually, I don't know if it's a light. But this one looks slightly darker. I got the same wheels. Although this one, this one's got um, no, it's got the same hook, but this one's got a little notch for that hook to sit in. See, and this one actually hasn't got it. It's got the plate there, but no notch in it for the hook to sit in. So I suppose I could count that as a variation, or maybe it's a factory defect, but uh, to me that means they are not identical, and actually I can see now that they are slightly different shades of red. This one is actually a darker shade. So it's me thinking I actually had absolutely identical tow trucks up there, and actually I haven't. Can I see the... Uh Cement truck up here. If it's actually up here, I may not have it on the shelf. Uh, plenty of Buick Regals. I've got those coming out the backside. <laughs> I've got plenty of these on the shelf. Bit of fluff stuck to that one. And all sorts of colours and permutations and variations and whatnot. <laughs> I'm going to have to get this, um, well I've got to take everything off this corgi shelf anyway because I want to give it a dust. Um, so I'll probably line them up on here and we can have a look at them. No, that cement truck is nowhere to be seen up here. But I know I've got it. 
If it isn't up here, it's in one of the two tubs under the bed. Same with the uh, red Capri here. I've got a few of these. Paint-wise, though, this is in the best condition. The beacon is in the roof because it is meant to be a fire chief car. Um, I know I've got one of these as well, but this one, paint-wise at least, is in better condition. But the downside is the bloody ejector button don't work. See, it's got the ejector roof on it, but it doesn't do anything. And I know I've got another one of these minis. And this one is actually in far better condition. I'm not actually 100% certain on that one. I don't think I've got that one. And then basically these three funky cars are on at the front here now. Um, I don't have any of those ones. Am I going to sneeze? I'm not sure. I think I'm going to sneeze. I've had all sorts of sinus trouble lately. So, how are you liking the new, um, what should I call it, video layout so far? Is it uh, any good, or should I go back to the old way at the computer desk, or... Oh. Yeah, let me know in the comments. So my little corgi truck here, I don't know what that truck is, is that a Mac? It looks like a Mac to me. Yep, Mac R series. There you go. I'm learning my American trucks. <laughs> it's actually in pretty good condition. Not the best, but not the worst. I thought this silver bit on the top there was actually quite rough, but it's not. It's just the way the light is reflecting. And these lights are giving off quite a lot of heat. I like little heaters. I've forgotten incandescent bulbs were like that. Right, so I've got a little Corgi um, Morris Marine that I couldn't resist. I love cars like this. Most car enthusiasts would just turn around and tell you they're complete crap and they're not worth anything, but to me, I love them. And then we've got a Dinky Comma Tow Truck, which has been repainted in, at some point in its life and had new stickers put on it. I don't know if you're going to see it in this light, but underneath the um, cabin chassis was originally a grey colour, like a drab grey colour. You can just see the remains of it in there. And the towing body was actually a dark blue. But, even though it's looking quite sorry for itself now, I just think it's got a certain charm to it. And I just couldn't resist it. And uh, that's actually another thing I want to add to my um, diecast collection this year, some more older dinkies. I have got dinky, but not very many, and not of this sort of time period either. So I wouldn't mind trying to add some more to that. And last but not least, we've got some Britons, and a Matchbox, and a Corgi tractor. So we've got the Mer Hill tractor. And I've got the trailer for this. Problem is the trailer's got bent axles and no tyres. But maybe I can fix it or find the trailer to go with it. I've just got a thing for tractors at the minute for some reason. And there's another one of these Corgi tractors. My other one's got no tyres. I'm not sure I'd be able to ever find the tyres for it. And he had this one there which is in near mint condition. So I just thought, you know, why not? Because saves the hassle of trying to find tyres. Maybe I'll sell the other one. Right, then we've got some Britain stuff. So I've got a couple of spreaders here. We've got a multi spreader and a muck spreader. Uh, we have got a Fiat tractor, minus its cab. So I've got these quite cheap. But I actually quite like these without the cab anyway, so it doesn't bother me. But this is a Fiat AAEDT, I think. I can't remember, it's hard to see it in this light. I think I am going to, if I'm going to do this more often on here, I'm going to have to improve the light because I cannot see it in this light. Yes, yeah, an AAEDT. Yeah, 
it. I actually, even though it's missing its cab, I actually quite like it without it, and it's still got the figure. Now we've got Ford. Same story. It's missing its cab, but I actually quite like the look of that one without it. So that's why I bought it. You never know. I might be able to find some broken tractors like this on eBay with um, the cabs, so I could swap them. This was actually glued to this by my die car supply because he thought that would just make it look nice and I've taken it off because it was annoying me. Um, then we've got Massey Ferguson here. Who is that? That's a 2680 the Massey. Not the same as the Massey that I got last year and traded back with him. It's a different one. It's missing the exhaust but that doesn't bother me. And the Ford, I forgot to tell you what the Ford is. It's a 5610. I am certain that that Ford, even though it's got pretty much the same size wheels, um, is actually slightly larger. I'm sure it's slightly taller. The engine bit here is slightly taller than the fit. Oh, just kick the tripod leg. That one's got a bit of a wonky exhaust on it. I'm not bothered by that either. And the last thing is this. I have got the fork. I'm not sure how that got broken off. It was laying in this. Yes, just laying in the top of the uh, muck spreader here. Yeah, I had this in the box before I actually set them all up on here. Um, and I found this bit loose, laying in the bottom. It come off this arm. But the um, pro snapped off. Um, this has got, I've got this for three quid, he let me have it for three quid, because this bit was actually on this. And I moved, I wish I didn't move it onto this now, because I would have probably have still had the problem there. I might super glue it back on, but uh, as you can tell, the um, hydraulic is a bit loose, it's had a bit of play wear to it. Um, we're missing a headlight, that's fell off there, and someone has actually glued this bit into this bit so it doesn't there's no telescopic mode on it anymore but uh, I'm not bothered by that I just like it as it is <laughs> it reminds me of a farm vehicle a true farm vehicle you know something that the farmer doesn't care about that they just bash it around on the farm and whatnot because it's actually missing the headlight and just needs a few windows missing and that looked look, right um, looked apart quite nicely yeah, so that's the haul. Now, I'll focus the camera on me, hopefully. So, behind me, I've got the shelf, which has got a load of Corgi models on it. So, what I plan to do in the very near future, as they all need a good dusting, I'm going to get them all off of that and give it a dust. Uh and then rearrange them all. I've also got some, you know, boxed cars and things hanging on display here. I'm just going to move out of the way, actually. Let's see if I... Whoopsie daisy, I hit the um, record button and stopped recording. And you see I've got some Hot Wheels and things. I've taken some down because I want to rearrange it all. And then we've got some more Matchbox at this end. I've got some more Corgi on the um, drawers there. Mainly the transit and escort vans up there. Yeah, so I want to uh, dust all that down. Maybe rearrange it because I have got a lot. See, this one is not in as good condition. That's why I paused because I just uh, saw that up there. It's not in as good condition as the other one, but it does work. Actually, it isn't in bad condition, to be honest, all over. That's actually quite a nice one. Where is that one? I think it's just a different shade of silver. This one's darker. But yeah, that button is... Um, I don't know if it's actually broken. Yeah, there's, I can't feel it doing anything. I can pull it. Can actually pull it out but it's not doing anything that's a shame really 
far enough noticed they've actually got different wheels. They're probably um, different releases then. One must be a later release. You've got to keep an eye on things like that because you can think you have absolute identical cars and then when you actually look at them you realise they're not. I've just realised <laughs> I have got a double here, hang on. Right. If you remember a little while ago I showed you these two cars and said one was had the green and red marking on and one had the blue. And look what I just found up on the shelf. Oh actually I've just realised it is different. It's got the green and red Fiat logo there, but it's a different colour. This one's a green. For some reason, when I saw it on the shelf, I thought it was the same colour as that one. So I've actually got three different ones. Actually, I've got more than that up here. For some reason, they're not actually together on the shelf. They seem to have got separated. I've got all sorts on here. Go through them all. I think I'm just going to pick my favourites to put up here. <coughs> Right, so, you know, I'm a member of a number of diecast groups on Facebook, and one thing I've noticed is that we all seem to go about the collection differently. We all have our own way of um, collecting. You know, there's people out there that collect, like, a specific brand only, like, they will only collect Corgi, and perhaps of a... A specific time period like perhaps from the 1960s and the 1970s only or they would just collect any corgi or the same with matchbox same with hot wheels you get people that will just buy what you know catches their eye what they like the look of which is exactly what i do um and then you'll get those like a youtuber i watch wtf4 who literally goes out and hunts for every Hot Wheels car he can find, especially vintage ones. And I would love, I think he's in Canada, if I remember right, I would love to fly to Canada and actually visit his basement. He's got other things like Matchbox and Johnny Lightning and some other brands and whatnot, all in boxes, but his walls, and I want to get something similar, I can't remember what he uses. I've been told I don't know how many times of like the cases he used to put his vehicles in because he puts his cases on the walls and they had just right cubbies in them to put a car in. And I was going to do that here. I was going to take most of these shelves down, you see, and put them on this wall because I think that would actually look a lot better. Um... But yeah, I can't remember what they're called. But he's just got hundreds. His basement is just completely covered in die cast. And some, you know, the prices he's paid for some of his vintage Hot Wheels going well into triple figures. You know, you'd have to be a very dedicated collector to spend that sort of money on a, you know, on a car that's that big. Um... But yeah, it's just the rarity of some of them that uh, is what demands that sort of price. Because you get collectors that will just, you know, bid against each other, so the price will just go up and up and up and up. <clears throat> but myself, I will, well, as you've seen, I've got quite a mix of all sorts. Matchbox, Corgi, Majorette, um, Hot Wheels... All sorts of different scales, modern, vintage, it's literally just whatever takes my fancy. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's actually, oh, Majorette. That's what I've not got up here, but I have got a couple of boxes under the bed. In fact, under my bed is purely just boxes of die cast. And then there's, behind the camera, there's another one, two, three tubs. And then another two in the cupboard in the hallway. 
which are actually just chock full of Hot Wheels. Just heard a noise outside, I'm not sure what, probably the wind actually blowing something. It's a little bit breezy tonight. <clears throat> I did notice with some of these tractors, I don't think it was on this one, actually yeah there was a tyre backwards on this one, and I noticed one of the front tyres were backwards on this, not that it really matters on the model but I noticed it and it would have just drove me nuts unless I changed it, and it was this one that was actually on backwards, it's actually made me want to go through all the others over there and check them, and all of those are actually going to be moved over here in a bit because I want to clear the bench behind you and so I can uh, get the uh, railway down for the first time this year. don't know if I'll do any videos on it. I haven't done any videos regarding the model railway for quite some time. Mainly because I haven't done anything with it. I've been concentrating on other things. I've not even bought anything for it. Uh, that said, I do want to um, take a ride over to Alsham in the near future and just visit the uh, Bureau Valley Railway model shop there and get some uh, model kits because my stepdad got a load so he's uh, inspired me to go and get some and he also bought some uh, it's a little bottle of glue about that big but it cost him 11 quid so it's not cheap but apparently it's he um, called it super glue for cardboard he said it's absolutely great for those model kits. You haven't got to wait so long for the glue to dry. You know, so you haven't got to be like, uh, glue a few bits together, wait an hour or so for that to dry, then glue another couple of bits together, which is what it's like with the PVA glue, which I've got none at hand to show you, but really, for a lot of this modelling, it's just bog standard PVA glue. That's all I'm using. I just bought it out of QD stores. Um, and when I'm like doing the ballasting for the track, I'll just water it down. And I can't remember the mix, but I have got a load more ballasting to do. The thing is, I'm not really a modeler. I'm quite happy with that as it is, you know. I've got the little bit done on the corner with the working lights um, and a couple of other buildings glued down. I'm just more interested in running the trains around the track. <laughs> But I do want to actually build it, you know, basically come out of my comfort zone and actually do a bit of uh, modelling. Because uh, I've never built a kit from scratch. Um, all the buildings I've got are all pre-built, you know, so most of them are from what my stepdad didn't want, so. And actually looking at a load of these boxes of um, rolling stock and whatnot, I'm going to have to sort those out as well. Because they just seem to be a complete mess at the minute. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to mention. I sort of strayed off the topic of um, diecast, didn't I? As much as got to sleep on the bed and I'm feeling a bit peckish. Right, so uh, let me know in the comments if you prefer this layout of video. You know, if you want me to put my die cast halls on this table if it's better to see them um, yeah oh sugar <laughs> stiff in the old age I know people say 39 isn't old but sometimes I feel it <laughs> cool yeah them lights they're not very bright, but they took out a lot of heat. Um, it's actually 90 watts total, believe it or not, just from three lights. Because these are 30 watt bulbs. So I just got. I was in the shed earlier looking for other bits, and I thought, you know what, I'll bring some different lighting up just to try and see which I actually like better. So these are just on a plug. So they're on this little wire here, and I haven't deliberately haven't clipped the cable in just in case I wanted to change it. 
and I've got various spotlights but I'd have to put the spotlights on the front of this shelf and I don't know what's going to be the better one to use I'm just going to experiment I'll have a bit of an experiment tomorrow uh, yeah because I will prefer LEDs I think because I think they're going to chew through the I mean I could actually just buy LEDs for these you can get these bulbs in LED form um, I have got a couple but they're too long for these fittings I need the smaller ones um, but to be honest I don't think they're actually throwing that much light down on here um, I don't really want to put a fluorescent light under there although I could because I've got loads of them in various lengths um, I suppose it could be cheaper to run because <laughs> uh, preferably I would actually prefer the lights where these ones are not on the front here I'd rather keep that spot you know to hang boxed vehicles on yeah I'm gonna have an experiment see if I can find anything else that's gonna work better and I might end up having to go for a dig around in the shed again tomorrow if it's not raining anywho that is it for the video so if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down um, as always I'll put links to my other two channels in the description down below as well as a link to Discord, so uh, if you use Discord, feel free to hop on over and join my server. And uh, have a bit of a chit chat on there, <coughs> and hang out. I'm on Discord most of the time anyway. Apart from on my phone, because I haven't got it installed on the new phone yet. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And half my head is cut off. <laughs> Oh well, see you later.